Okay, so in this video, I'm going to set up a Google Sheet. Uh, normally, I, I work with Microsoft Excel because it's just, uh, in many instances, the most straightforward tool. But Google Sheets are uh, also fairly ubiquitous, and I suppose they're free as well, which is um, uh, a huge uh, advantage uh, where people are working with tight budgets. Um, okay, so Google Sheet is just something that's available in your uh, web browser. It's for all the world. It's like Excel, and you can do many of the things that Excel permits you to do. Uh, Google, uh, Excel has the advantage that there's a lot of preloaded um, functions in, and that's what makes uh, uh, Excel quite versatile. But I'm I'm going to use a set up an example here, a uh, kind of a Black Shoals uh, inspired uh, example, and I've gone and I've managed to um, find some code uh, at uh, AA Smith JavaScript option stuff. Um, okay, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to well I'll give this a name, um, implied volatility. And I have a few videos based on implied volatility in C++ and in VBA. Okay, and I'm going to take in some code. Okay, so I'm going to copy the code here, available at this website. And it's just a plain copy. And I go back into the spreadsheet. And then I'm going to load. Now that is JavaScript, just to say. Uh, in Excel, we can uh, set up functions to execute um, calculations using uh, Visual Basic um, VBA. And in Google Sheets, uh, act the uh, language that can be that's used here for um, uh, user-defined functions is in JavaScript. Okay, so if I go into Tools, Script Editor, okay, I get um, a section here where I can enter in code. Okay, so I delete out what's there and I just paste. Okay, and basically in there, uh, there is some code. Now I've got to save it, I think, before uh, Implied volatility, I suppose. And I just say uh, Java, maybe? JavaScript. Okay, and that doesn't seem to create any uh, issues. Okay, and then I come down beneath, below here, and I seem to have a function. Let me see. I think it's this function I use. Uh, I don't see the. Okay, so I'm going to do a double forward slash there because I don't see the next function. But I have a function here. Option implied volatility, where uh, the call. So if it's a call, it's a call, or otherwise it's a put. Uh, and then we have a stock price, exercise price, risk free rate, time to maturity, and then what we observe the option price to be. So I've I've a set of video clips uh, available on YouTube that uh, have done these type of estimations. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that code, right? And I'm gonna go back into the spreadsheet, and I'll just paste it somewhere. It doesn't really matter. Edit paste. And what I want to do is to set out, um, you know, is it a call, uh, stock, exercise. So I'm just creating a series of variables in the same order as appeared in the function. Risk free rate, the maturity, and then the option price. So whatever the market option price is, and that's O. Okay, and... Um, Okay, I think it was true or false here. I'm going to go with call. Um, I'm going to go with stock price. Uh, maybe I should go true. It is a call option. Okay, true. And 100. 
and the exercise also 100 and risk free rate is 5% and the time period is one year and then the option price now I have already done some estimations previously and if we had these parameter values and an, a black Scholes implied volatility of 20% then the value of the call would be 1045 so what I'm going to try and do here is recover the implied volatility of 20% um, and if this function can pull out 20% then I think we're the function is is working okay so I'll put in equal to and option now it's not prompting me so I'm going to maybe I should just paste I had hoped it would recognize the function so I'm going to put in option implied volatility and equal to and I'll just go um, I'll take the first one first cell there C4 second cell exercise the S stock price third cell exercise uh, C7 is the risk free volatile risk free rate we're looking for the volatility comma one is the maturity on the option one year and 1045 is the value of the call value of the call um, and the value I should get here is 20 percent okay and I'm getting uh, 19 okay so uh, that looks uh, as if it's actually fairly accurate right um, because in other estimations that I've done when in Excel this would be 20 percent although the 1045 it would be 104506 I think Let me change that to 06 and we're getting probably closer to 20 percent so this function looks good and uh, what this example serves to demonstrate first of all that Google Sheets uh, is a relatively can be made to be a relatively sophisticated tool in terms of uh, finan financial estimation it's also something it's also a uh, free which is fairly significant incentive uh, for people to make use of a resource because uh, not everybody has access or has the means to download excel spreadsheets uh, my preferred tool is excel because i think it's a it's kind of a workhorse especially in industry and for teaching and so on um, excel is very important but i can see where google sheets plays um, represents a kind of a viable alternative and also if if javascript is something that uh, is, we consider worth learning uh, worth having um, a better understanding of uh, this you know google sheets allows us to um, experiment a little bit in a fairly straightforward way um, the versatility also of of javascript so that's also something that is uh, useful and has some pedagogic uh, merit okay and uh, i'm going to experiment a little bit more and, and probably a few more of the videos i release will make some reference to the google sheets going forward okay that's it